Hey guys, it's Inez or at Girl with Reels on Instagram. I'm here today because I got another package from Do It Molds today. And I have to tell you guys, this package has made my day because I had the absolute worst fishing trip today. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about it at the end of this video. But it was something straight out of a movie. And I'm just like so glad that it's over. So I ordered more colorant, more skirts, more powder paints. Um, I ordered some glitter, I think. Maybe I didn't order glitter. But I did order um, two new molds. So I'll show you everything I got. One, two, three. Fourteen items, and the most expensive thing I bought was twenty-two dollars, which was one of the molds. And my total with shipping and everything was one twenty-seven sixty-six. So fourteen things, with the most expensive thing being the two new um, molds. I mean, it's not bad. I didn't think it was bad, but. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll look at is I got new colorant for my soft plastic molds. And I ordered motor oil, the color motor oil. I was really excited about getting this color, so I can't wait to try that one. And I also got Midnight Blue. And if you look on the website, they have all the colors on there. So I know pretty much every color looks the same inside these bottles. But on the website, you can really see the difference. Like, it's not the same at all. So, And then I got Florida Grape. I'm excited about these colors. I can't wait to try them. And I got one more colorant and that is tomato which is like this red. They, okay obviously this one looks different but oh do you like my manicure? When I go to work I'm gonna destroy them but whatever. So those are the four colorants I got which I'm excited because even though I started out with the jigs, like powder painting my football heads and hand tying my skirts, I think I'm really excited about pouring the soft plastics. So that might be my new baby and then do hand tying on the side. So we'll see. Okay, so I also ordered four new powder, uh, Protec powder paints. I got, this color is Junebug Flake. And it's like this really pretty purpley color. You can see the GoPro lights. I'm really excited about this. It's like a purple with like a blue glitter in there. Pretty done. So I'm really ex actually really excited about making this one. And I also got pumpkin brown now that I look at it it's really I mean just looking at the powder it looks similar to new penny but on the website it didn't look like that so probably once it like melts on there it doesn't look the same sorry if I'm low energy but that trip today really just drained me I mean it was like survival of the fittest out there it was crazy and then I got a glitter protect which is it's like a clear coat that has a glitter mixed in it already and this one is in black which I saw um, people do like this purple one and then with a little bit of black glitter over it it has a really cool like June buggy effect. 
And then this one is a chartreuse. So it's a glitter. So it's a clear paint. But then you get like a chartreuse color glitter in there. There's like a top coat for your jig head. So that's those four. Junebug Flake. Uh, pumpkin Brown. The Black Glitter Coat. And the Chartreuse Glitter Coat. That's those. And I also ordered four new skirts. And I made the same mistake again. I meant to order tabbed and I ordered banded. So, I mean, you can still do it. It's a little bit more difficult because you don't have the solid ends to like keep better control of the skirts. But that's what I did the first time. So I'll just have to do it again. So I ordered, this one is black and blue watermelon. And this one is Grasshopper, is the name of that one. I like this one a lot. And then we have, oops, this one is just black and blue. I've watched a lot of different, um, like, YouTube channels of, like, pro bass fishermen. And pretty much every single one of them said that their favorite color as far as what they use for their baits is blue and black. So that's kind of what influenced these purchases because it's a lot of blue, right? And then this last one is called Bruiser. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's like blue, black, and purple, which is basically all the colors of bruises. Except when it's at this very end phase and it's like green color. So, those are my four skirts that I ordered. I'm really excited to do, use this black and blue one. And I think I'm going to use this um, Junebug Flake with it. Or actually, I might use Junebug Flake with this Bruiser one. Uh, I really like those two together. So, so I did order two new molds, and the first one I ordered is the 3-inch Mad Dad 3 Super Chun. It's look how tiny that is compared to my hand. It's going to be a cute one. And these are all uh, open pour. I am not, it's not that I'm not sold on the injection, but I'm just like, I want to try out the hand pours first so uh, I'll probably because they don't offer a lot of hand pours my next purchase will be an injection mold so and I'm gonna try to get like some a little bit more intricate one because it is injection so it's a lot easier to do injection as far as the more intricate part ones so, oh, this is awesome. So this is what that one looks like. Let me see that. Pretty cool. And this is a little baby one. It's three inches, so. And it even has, you can't really tell probably from the video, but the eyes are like drilled mm -hmm. down. So you'll, oh my gosh, my parents. So I really have to tell you the story about this fishing trip today because my mom and dad are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. My mom said she was going to kick my ass when she got home because of the really the danger that I was in. So I did buy the same bait, obviously, but the two different sizes is because I'm going to tie two different size hooks. So the smaller one, I'll use this as a trailer, and then on the larger ones, I'll use this. Those tailor, trailered jigs tend to do really well here where I live. Uh, I don't have a ton of areas to fish around here. 
I do live in California, so we are in a drought. Like Lake Isabella is not a lake, it's a pond now pretty much because that's how much it shrunk. And Truxton Lake is really small. Um, I went up to Peppermint Creek and it was about three inches deep. So, I mean, we've really lost a lot of our fishing areas around here. But uh, Hart Park, Lake Ming, as long as it's there, you know, they're going to be letting that drain out too. So, but until then, I'll fish them all. All right, so just a quick rundown of all the items that I bought. I got four colorants, and then I got tomato, Florida grape, which is an awesome purple. I really can't wait to use this one. Motor oil, and midnight blue. And these are really good size. So, I mean, they're gonna last you a long time, especially if you're only using like four drops which is like what I recommend. Well, depending on how transparent you want your bait. And then I got four packs of five uh, in the skirts, which I did buy the wrong ones. You wanna buy the tabbed, just because they're easier to work with. So I'll still use these, it's just a little bit more. And then I got four powder paints, the Protect powder line. And I got two open pour molds, which I cannot wait to use, by the way. And for all of that, with shipping, I paid $127.66. So, it's not a bad price. I mean, I, I find that reasonable based on the pricing of other you know hobby items that you could purchase i mean i don't think that's bad for as many items as i bought so and all the colorants did come with these little caps so that's cool you don't pay anything for these they just give them to you So that's everything I bought. I'm really excited to use it. I should have another video up tomorrow. I'm gonna pour this small crawl, the three inch one, and I'm gonna tie a black and blue jig. And I'll powder paint it. Actually, I don't know, we'll see what I do tomorrow. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> Okay, so grab a cup of coffee, a drink, whatever, because I'm about to tell you what happened. So today, I was supposed to go meet my brother at Peppermint Creek, which is like a campsite, probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on how fast or slow you drive, um, from where we live. Well, there's two ways to get there. And apparently I took the hard way because it took me about two hours just to get to the top of the mountain. I went through a town called Porterville, which took me through a town called Springville. And Peppermint Creek is like at the top of this big mountain that's over there. So I'm driving, I finally get into Springville and I ask because I don't know exactly where it's at. And they tell me, oh, yeah, just keep driving to the top of the mountain and you'll start seeing signs for it, right? So I finally get to a little cafe at the top of the mountain and I'm like, please, does anybody know where Peppermint Creek is at? And by now it's, I mean, t time has passed. I've been driving for over two hours at this point. And a guy had a map, so he helped me find it. I took a picture of the section of the map and I took off driving. Well, I finally saw signs that said Peppermint Creek campsites, right? So I turn off. Well, I see like five little campsites and I'm like, I don't see my brother, which is at Fat Guy in the Outdoors on Instagram if you don't, didn't know that we're related. 
So I'm like, I don't see him out here. So let me keep driving because I look back at the map and it's like the campgrounds, you know, a ways down on the road. So I'm like, okay, this not, must not be the only campsite. So I'm driving and I'm in my husband's truck. So I'm kind of like, okay, cool. Like if I was in my car, I would have been screwed. Well, the road starts to get sketchy. Like it's got holes in it. There's big rocks I'm driving over and I'm like, okay, I need to turn around. Right. So I finally get to a spot where I could turn around. I back up and I start to pull out so I can go back the opposite direction and I go boom what is that put it in reverse I can't get out I'm stuck and I by that point I'm like two miles inland from that original campsite and there's nobody to be found so I'm like what am I gonna do at this point what am I gonna do I don't really have a choice I can't just sit in the truck and wait because nobody's gonna come find me nobody even knows I'm there right so I hike by myself the two miles back to that main road like where those little campsites are and as I'm getting close I hear all this like yelling and just crazy stuff going on I'm like what is that well, there was like, I don't know what they were, a cult or something. And they're like there, there's probably like 20 cars, right? So, and I couldn't hear them when I was driving through because I had my windows up. Well, I'm like, oh, I'm not stopping at this campsite, campground to ask for help. So I kept walking. I'm just going to just hit the main road. And then I saw a guy driving this way. And uh, I like kind of waved him down. And he was like my age. And I was like, oh my God, can you help me please? My truck is stuck like way down there. And I hiked all the way back up here to try to get help. And he's like, oh my God, like I don't have anything to pull you out with, but let's go check it out. So he drove me down there, back down there. So I got in the car with a stranger. Thank God like he wasn't a weirdo. He was from a town called Tulare, which is about two hours away from where I live. So I was, it's a big ag, um, town so if you're in the ag business or anything ag related like you know what Tulare the city of Tulare is but so he drives me down there and he finally gets my truck out and I'm just like oh my god thank you so much uh, I'm trying to find lower peppermint campsites he's like oh you're not even close get back on the main road and keep driving for like a half an hour and I'm just like I'm gonna kill my brother at this point I'm cursing his name like every freaking word you can imagine, right? So I drive back that way, I get back on the main road and I'm driving and I'm like, there's no, this campground does not exist because I still can't find it. So finally, after like 30 minutes, I start seeing signs for the Lower Peppermint Creek campgrounds. So I follow them, follow them, and who's the first truck I see as soon as I pull into those campgrounds? My brothers. And I see my sister-in-law and my two nieces, and I'm like, oh my god, you have no idea like how good it feels to see people's faces that I know. So I get off, I hang out for a little bit. My brother's like long gone fishing somewhere, so I didn't even end up fishing there. The water was this deep. You know, California is not a drought, so I mean, a lot of the good fishing spots are drying up. So I'm just like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna go home, but I'm gonna go the other way that they came, they went over there, which is like the easy way. So I get on that road, right? And I'm driving and oh my God, some awesome fishing spots start popping up. It's like, I'm gonna pull over right here and I'm gonna throw my line out a little bit, right? Cause that's what I went up there for to fish. So I get out, I pull over, I get out and I throw my line out there and I reel it in and it's hot. So I'm like, nothing's gonna bite right now. There was like no shade. Oh, like, whatever. Who cares? I just want to fish a little bit. So my hook gets stuck in a tree. I can't get it out. It's, like, hanging, like, way over the water. So I end up breaking my line. I'm like, just go home, Inez, because everything has gone wrong today. So I get back in the truck, and I start driving. I haven't even made it to Kernville yet. And, you know, I'm watching all these people rafting and camping and all that stuff as I'm driving by I'm like oh my god that looks like so much fun whatever right so I find I come up on some, another good spot to fish and I'm like this is perfect I'm gonna catch something here 
So I pull over, I throw my line out, ain't nothing biting. Change up my bait, nothing's biting still. So I try to toss it along the edge where there's like a lot of shade. And of course with it being my day, right? I get hung up in the tree. Well, it's on the pretty close to the bank. So I'm like, I could get this out. So I kind of walk down, I reel my line in as I'm walking so it's not all slacked everywhere. And I'm unhooking my hook. I'm like, yay, I'm gonna get it. I'm not gonna lose it. And I finally get it and I'm like, yes. So I start to reel it in. I look down, I'm standing in a pile of ants and I'm like on the edge of the water, the bank, whatever. So I start like, ah, and I stop my feet a couple times while I'm reeling in. I slip and fall in the river. So, as I'm sitting there with about this much down in the river, I'm like, okay, I got my truck stuck. I rode in a truck for two miles with a stranger to help me. I had to hike two miles just to get that help. I got my hook stuck in the tree and I lost one of my jigs. And now I just fell in the river. What else could go wrong? So I yelled at myself, I cussed, I said a lot of bad words, and I said, Inez, get in the truck and go home because this day is over. So I drove the hour and a half home, and the first thing I did when I got home was I checked the mail, and this awesome package was in there. And I was so thankful for it because it just totally made my day. And I was just like, do it molds. You have perfect timing because I was not happy on my drive home. I was soaking wet in my husband's brand new truck. I had to put plastic bags on the seat. I scratched it, the shit out of the sides. But thank God it was just like twigs. So I don't know if there was like actual scratches or if it was just like rubbed over all the dirt. So I went straight to the car wash and got it washed because I was like, if this truck is scratched as bad as it looks, I'm like, I should have just stayed out there with the truck because I wasn't gonna make it. I'm just kidding, he's not like that, but he would have been mad at me. So, I mean, what else is there to say? All that stuff happened and I'm just like, oh. So you guys saw my purchase and you heard my horrible fishing story and uh, keep a lookout on my Instagram. Uh, I'm, I am going to do another video probably tomorrow making uh, this mold, the 3 inch, and tying and painting uh, one of my jigs. So thank you to Do It Molds for like rescuing my day today. And thank you to all of you guys who watch my video and follow me on Instagram. You guys are awesome. And don't forget to hit that little button on the bottom, the subscribe button. <laughs> and that way you will be alerted whenever I upload videos in the future. So thank you guys. Thank you Do It Molds for rescuing my day. And I will talk to you guys later.